So, I've seen this video surfacing a couple of times about how marijuana can replace five prescription drugs, namely Vicodin, Xanax, Adderall, Ambien, and Zoloft. So, this covers five different categories. Painkillers, anti-anxiety, stimulant slash ADD medication, sleep aids, and antidepressants. Now, I'm all for the legalization of marijuana, but this video claims that marijuana can replace these drugs. And when it uses the word replace, it doesn't seem to imply for the consumer, it means for the whole industry. And this simply isn't true. So let me get into the way these drugs work, so you're not just going into these things with ignorance and blind faith. Firstly, Vicodin for painkilling. Vicodin works as a central nervous system depressant, which slows brain activity. It interacts as an agonist at specific neurotransmitter receptors, specifically the delta, my, kappa, and sigma receptors. Vicodin binds to these receptors to numb feelings of pain. Weed, on the other hand, doesn't reduce pain. It actually just makes it more bearable. Marijuana affects the regions in the emotional aspects of pain and has little reduction in the brain regions for the sensation of pain. So weed acts more as a pain distractor than a painkiller. Therefore, not being able to replace Vicodin, but can definitely help with pain. Next on the list is Xanax for anti-anxiety. Xanax is also a central nervous system depressant and is somewhat similar to alcohol. Xanax and other benzos increase the effects of gamma aminobutyric acid, which allows chloride ions to reach cell receptors. These chloride ions slow the activity of the cell, which results in a feeling of calmness and relaxation. Weed, on the other hand, affects the endocannabinoid system. It's said that cannabinoid receptors are highly concentrated in certain parts of the brain responsible for anxiety. Studies show that anxiety is increased when these receptors are blocked. Research also linked the endocannabinoid system to the extinction of bad memories, meaning it's great for post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as neurogenesis, which means it can grow new brain cells, which is believed to improve anxiety levels. However, paranoia and anxiety are some of the most commonly reported side effects of marijuana use, especially in new and infrequent users. Studies reveal a complex link between cannabinoids and anxiety, suggesting the effect of anxiety depends both on dosage as well as the type of cannabinoids present. THC decreases anxiety at low doses, but does the opposite at higher doses. This study has not been replicated with pure THC, only higher THC levels in pot. And CBD is more effective than THC in regulating anxiety, and it could block anxiety provoked by THC. So it significantly decreases subjective anxiety measures as well as activity in certain parts of the brain associated with anxiety. So we can't replace Xanax. It, it just doesn't work the same way, but it can be beneficial for anxiety if used correctly. You gotta know your dosage and start small and probably pick strains high in CBD. Next on the list is Adderall for attention deficit disorder. So Adderall works by tapping into the brain that the parts of the brain that controls hyperactivity and impulses and improves attention and focus. It brings the brain down from overstimulation to a baseline stimulation. This in turn overstimulates the brain of a person who does not have ADD. Adderall mimics the actions of epinephrine, which is adrenaline, it's usually what they have in EpiPens, norepinephrine, and dopamine in higher quantities. Epinephrine is responsible for clarity and focus, and non-epinephrine facilitates communication between neurons. Overall, Adderall can give you an intense focus which can allow for more cramming info into your brain than you'd normally be able to do. Weed, however, is known to cause loss of focus and increased impulsivity in recreational users. Interestingly enough, it seems to be the opposite for people with ADD. The endocannabinoid system can influence dopamine levels similar to how Ritalin increases dopamine. The human body may also naturally produce more endocannabinoids in attempt to counter the symptoms of ADHD, so the endocannabinoid system can be effectively targeted in the treatment for this disorder. Cannabinoid receptors are found in higher densities in area of the brain that are linked to the symptoms with ADHD. However, anecdotal evidence is not sufficient enough in recommending cannabis for ADD or ADHD. Therefore, although it could possibly help with it, not too much is known regarding the matter. And for that reason, until we have more data, it's unlikely weed will even be recommended much for these disorders. So, 
claiming that weed can replace Adderall is very ignorant. There's just not that much data even showing that it would work for it. Next on the list is Ambien for sleep aid. Ambien actually works pretty dang close to Xanax, so I won't waste time explaining it. However, Ambien isn't actually in the same category of Xanax, which is a benzo, but it binds to the same receptors. This can cause memory problems and can cause people to act out everyday activities in their sleep. However, weed affects sleep in many different ways. It allows for better breathing, which is great for sleep apnea sufferers, as well as shorter REM sleep, which is also beneficial to that group. It allows for longer sleep, more deep sleep, and makes it easier to fall asleep. This actually works because the endocannabinoid system is responsible for regulating sleep. It also reduces the beta amyloid plaque, which is commonly associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. Weed may not work the same way as Ambien, but in my honest opinion, since it works the same as Xanax, you're either better off taking that because it doesn't have the side effects of Ambien, or you're just better off taking a hit of pot because the evidence seems clear enough that it's a lot more beneficial than taking Ambien. That one I'll go with. It can't necessarily replace it, but in my opinion, it's probably better than taking Ambien. Lastly, we have Zoloft, which is an antidepressant. Zoloft is a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which basically means it slows cells that create serotonin from reabsorbing them, making more available to the brain. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter, which transmits electrical impulses from one neuron to the next and allows chemicals to send additional impulses to the receiving neuron. Weed works by having a therapeutic role in depression via the endocannabinoid system. Suppression of the endocannabinoid activity is linked to symptoms of major depression, so increased endocannabinoid activity has antidepressant-like effects. Low doses of THC produce strong antidepressant-like effects, whereas high doses reverse the effects and worsen depression. However, this was only tested with synthetic THC, which is around 20 times more potent than regular THC. Weed's neurogenesis effects are also much like traditional antidepressant medications. They actually do the same thing, and neurogenesis is believed to reverse what stress and depression do. So weed seems pretty good as an antidepressant, although it doesn't work exactly the same way, it actually seems pretty close. So all in all, I don't think weed can replace really any of these drugs. I mean, it's close, it's close to Zoloft, so you can kinda argue there, but you know, it can still be used instead of these drugs. It might even be more beneficial to you because not everything works for everybody. But a couple things are for sure. You need to have the correct strain for certain disorders. You need to start with a small dose and work your way up if it doesn't work the way you want. But make sure you're careful because although you can't overdose, you can actually do the opposite of what you intend, and that wouldn't be good. To save some time, I've provided links to good recommended strains for specific disorders. If you're looking to try them out, just remember to be careful. Every person reacts to things differently, and if it doesn't work for you, there's probably an alternative out there. But if it does, then you're going to be in high cotton. Look it up. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, all of my references will be provided in the description if you want to check out where I got all this information from. And I'm not saying to go out and try smoking pot if you have any of these things. I'm just saying scientific evidence shows that it could be beneficial. And if you're where it's legal, go ahead, try it out. But if not, then I would recommend you try some other things before you decide to try marijuana. Friendlies have been eliminated.